everyone um, and welcome to uh, welcome to the presentation for security token offerings and security tokens today we are going to discuss about the benefits the risk and mitigation of security tokens and SEOs so uh, first of all so I'm Manindra founder CEO for tokenizer and block X tokenizer is a neo bank a new um, digital bank that's for the new digital era uh, we, we are able to do most of uh, uh, any fiat gateways, just like any digital bank. Um, and block block X only layer one chain that's able to run EVM and Cosmos applications and transactions at lightning lightning speed. Tokenizer is currently live uh, for U.S. residents and citizens. So if you are a U.S. citizen resident, please sign up for your free account with no minimum balance at tokenizer.cc. Um, and BlockX is right now on testnet, so basically all the functions are live, but we are not on the mainnet yet, and we aim to be on the mainnet within this quarter. So without further ado, yeah, let me um, let me go through the presentation. Uh, like I said, we will basically is divided into three sections. So first we'll go through the benefits, then we'll talk about some risk of security token offerings, and finally how we can mitigate some of those risks. So first of all, just to be on the same page, Security tokens essentially represent sort of a fraction ownership of, of an underlying asset. And security token offerings is essentially a primary issue or the initial issue of the tokens, of digital tokens for fundraising purposes, which are then given out to investors. Mostly STOs are within accredited investors. Uh, by the big for the asset class and, and for the governing jurisdiction, and they are uh, different from utility tokens in the sense that they are usually subject to the security laws of both the um, jurisdiction of the asset and the investors in many cases. So, so there is a higher burden of compliance when it comes to security tokens, but at the same time, is there is higher higher protection for investors for security tokens they usually involve financial rights and various relationship which can involve obviously ownership but also revenue sharing dividends uh, voting rights and and various things like that so uh, ultimately a huge huge plus if it's done right and i think has a, has a huge and great future in front of us for security tokens we're just getting started Okay, so let's talk about some of the some of the benefits. Uh, first is the, is the liquidity, the pro or the promise of liquidity is that secondary markets, as effective secondary markets, can be built far more easily for security tokens than it can be done for traditional uh, securities, right? For the obvious reason that the matching internet and everything is going to work very well, and essentially the infrastructure, the core infrastructure, is seen that you need. For st for standard yearly token based crypto exchanges or any peer to peer platform that already exists out there, so the technology is the same, but since there are higher uh, regulatory requirements, these platforms also have to be able to check for those on top of the the, the general general trading, and they they usually will really exceed far more than KYC ML because uh, beyond KYC ML, there is obviously in most cases requirement of accreditation check and then various laws around the transfer of securities and then the landscape the gold goes for these laws are changing and they're different by jurisdiction just to complicate this even further but it takes the promise of far more effective exchange less intermediaries and and very fast settlement technology possible and we have to, uh, and i think we will get there so and all of this will lead to far higher liquidity of the of security tokens uh, itself, security itself. The second is the lower cost. So as we build more and more security tokens, although it it does need legal help and auditing fees and everything else, but these will become more and more tem a template. So they should be able to be done more and more effectively and cheap uh, and in a cheaper way as we move forward. Also, I think a lot we will be able to leverage the technology of blockchain and smart contracts to bring down the cost further into both the issuance and the management of the security tokens. Uh, then finally is the promise of the global access, right, for demand, for both demand and supply side. Because 
basically as long as someone have internet access they may be they may be a resident in any country for an international offering as long as they meet the requirements they should be able to subscribe and hold those security tokens in any part of the world so the demand for the security tokens uh, can lead to a global and democratization of holding securities around the world a potentially more equitable world obviously the rules has to be looked at for both the asset class as well as the, the, the jurisdiction of the, the investor itself, but it will lead to a far higher and far wider base of demand overall. Uh, not only demand supply will increase as well because and uh, will become far more global because now uh, a property, for example, from Bahamas to the to India to China to US can all be tokenized and be put on put primary marketplaces as well as secondary exchanges of security tokens, leading to a far diverse, better, and exciting world of security in front of us. For this transparency, so um, since the security tokens which represent an underlying assets are on blockchain, they could be tracked far more easily. Uh, the information around them could be shared more, much more easily. So, so it, it is f much more transparent from an investor point of view uh, of for security tokens than traditional. Um, then is an improved compliance. So, unlike a lot of popular belief that security tokens may lead to people actually going around the laws, I think the opposite is true. Is that since we can use a lot of um, automated compliance in the form of uh, smart contracts and blockchain. A lot of the requirements, for, whether it's KYC, AML, and the uh, accreditation check, as well as the rights for the security tokens, such as voting rights and various things, could actually be embedded and programmatically put inside the token itself. So that will lead to far more improved compliance for the security tokens. So. Once we have, so just let's summarize the benefits very quickly. So liquidity, far bigger market, lower cost of insurance and management, global access, democratization both for demand and supply side, uh, full transparency, you know, uh, these could be tracked on the blockchain, and improved compliance because it can be automated and be programmed and baked into the smart contracts of the security token itself. So several benefits of for STOs. Now we will look at some of the risk. So the, the, the top, the, the main risk is the regulatory uncertainty. So although a lot of security tokens tend to inherit basically the rules of the security itself, uh, there are multiple countries have come up with different rules and requirements about security tokens and that keeps changing. It's a moving goalpost. Um, and because it's different by country, I think again that leads to, uh, that is also another form of risk on adoption and becoming it, making it far more complicated as different countries will be, may lead to different uh, rules uh, for the environment. Then the second is the, the secondary market availability. So just because it's technologically possible to build secondary markets, we will have to see that actually leads to creating uh, improved liquidity. And the risk around that is the type of investors for security tokens if they follow all the security rules, are usually great investors who tend to hold for long term, um, and they have acts uh, and yeah, and then they would they have, they have far more care about various other things like the increased market value versus being able to trade them every other day. So so although it's technically possible, we have to see that that actually leads to higher liquidity, um, and those exchanges are built up properly to make the liquidity available in a fair and equitable way across countries. So yeah, so there's some, so I think that, that that's a risk of how big the liquidity actually uh, goes in. Uh, finding technical standards, like they are not really a standard for security tokens. I think different companies have proposed standards, including some EIPs, but people are really free to choose whatever they want. A lot, of, a lot have chosen ERC20 with modified functions. So these functions tend to be different from asset class to asset class and company to company and issuer to issuer. So that leads to new form of risk, both in terms of like how they are managed, its cost, and also with the security vulnerabilities. So I think we will have to ultimately uh, come together, basically propose uh, new, new rules and laws that will be more common across countries, like across asset classes. So, uh, so, so that these, these marketplaces and investors can come together 
uh, as well as the assets can come together in a more trusted, trusted manner. Finally, vulnerability. So this is a digital asset. And anything digital, you have the potential problem of that being hacked or being misused and abused, uh, of having a vulnerability from a security point of view, and that those breaches and those possibility of those breaches do definitely exist for security tokens as well. But a lot of work has been done to make them far more secured, and potentially there could be avenues with insurance and clawbacks and other things that will be able to limit the vulnerability of security tokens in the future. Okay. So risk, number one is regulatory, second is the liquidity availability of security tokens, then the technical standards, can we try to make them common, and then finally is vulnerability, security vulnerability of the security tokens getting hacked. So now, I would like to discuss some ways that we can mitigate some of this, um, some of this risk. So first is if we can all come together and try to form clear and consistent regulatory frameworks. So that will enable us to be able to like have standardized rules across assets and potentially across jurisdictions. So uh, that will lead to building of various uh, applications. Obviously the first one is an exchange that will be far more easier to build and maintain around security tokens. And obviously various other protocols and platforms, for example, lending platforms of security tokens. Um, they could, yeah, and, and various DeFi, I think it can open up a completely new chapter of DeFi, which is done on, on security tokens and how we can leverage, leverage those. But that, that all needs far more consistent regulatory framework to be there. The second is cyber threats as well as human errors during the coding. So, but that's common for anything to do with digital. But, but, the, but we are constantly mitigating those because a lot of security tokens get get third party audited uh, for their for any human errors or vulnerability or cyber threats that could be detected. So we are partially mitigating that already. Third is the adoption of common standards. So, like I was uh, telling before, not only regulatory, but if the technical standards can also be uh, common uh, across multi-asset classes and jurisdictions, that will enable, okay, uh, that'll help everyone to build applications, to save them, to store them, to sell them across across marketplaces, and lead to a far more healthy, effective. Uh, ecosystem for security tokens in, in, in general. And then the protocols for secondary trading, right? So, so secondary trading is technically possible, but if, if, uh, but if they will be constrained to a single market if these protocols are not common. So, but if they are not common, if they are, yes, but if they are common, then the security tokens can now actually be traded across marketplaces. And that will just uh, lead to a huge boom in the marketplace. So that way we can mitigate and help in the creation of overall liquidity of the secondary uh, marketplaces um, for security tokens. So basically the, the theme as you can see is basically around rules and regulations and how we can uh, make them common across uh, various security tokens and then be, be very careful about any human errors or or be uh, keep an uh, keep an eye out for any cyber threats possible. These are all manageable risk mi that we can mitigate, but it's just good to be very aware of it, so that we can uh, we can make it all work. So um, so yeah, that's about it. Um, again, um, I think it's a huge future for security tokens coming up. Uh, the you know, both from issuance and. Um, the mar and the marketplaces that are getting built are, re are great and we are just getting started. Uh, with tokenizing, I think we believe that everything potentially can be tokenized in, in existing security rule-based ways as well as newer and more creative ways of fractionalizing different assets into multiple parts. For example, um, a, a, a condo can have not just one owner, could have multiple owners and everyone gets a revenue share and various things. Based on their based on their holding, security tokens can be an NFT or it can be an, um, a token itself, as we say. So multiple ways to go about it. There, there there are risk and potential mitigation for that, but the benefits definitely far outweigh any of the risk and, that we have identified or seen so far. So we should definitely go forward, but just be careful not to break any rules. 
um, and be careful to take legal opinion and uh, make sure that we do, do this right because there is a lot of people's hard money involved from an investor's point of view and a lot of blood and sweat involved in the building of various asset classes. So with that in mind, um, let's, uh, let's build a healthy marketplace and a healthy ecosystem for STOs, security token offerings and security tokens and, um, yeah, and, and let's all hope for a more democratized uh, a financial future for all of us. Thanks very much. I'm Manindra. Feel free to get in touch with me with any questions. Uh, my contact details are right here. Okay, thank you.